Welcome to the Wolverine Digest podcast, the best spot for objective and authentic coverage of Michigan athletics. If you want open dialogue, honest opinions, and in-depth coverage of the maze and blue, this is the podcast for you. And now, here's your host, Brandon Brown. Well, another Wednesday, another show. We got a we got a full cast this week. Um, Dad, were you here last week, or did you miss last week? I was here. You were here. Nick was not. I think Dad missed the week before that. But anyway, all right, all five of us back. Excited about that. All hands on deck for the big Michigan spring game on Saturday. Eric has got some new equipment he was texting me about today. He's super pumped to be there. He's going to be on the sidelines shooting video, shooting photos. So that'll be cool. I'll be in the booth. Uh, it's on TV. It's on Fox for everybody who wants to check it out. So that's cool. Very I cool. Think, uh, even Dad can watch that out there in the sticks of New Lothrop with the uh, the uh, antenna shoved in the doorway. So that should nice, be good. Nice. Everybody can take in the spring game, and people are – well, I wanted to start right there, actually. We do have a lot of topics to get to. We're going to talk Denard Robinson, unfortunately, and some bad news. I've got some questions to go through about the spring game itself, a little ranking game. So we got lots of good stuff to get to. It's all football today. We'll come back to some basketball stuff maybe next week. Uh Dusty May has had some guys on campus, but nobody's committed yet. So still just kind of waiting there. So I think that's, that's actually okay. Uh, Be all football today. I need to switch that audio thing back. I just remembered. So you guys aren't getting an echo. Um, But I want to start right there. It's something that kind of comes up a lot. Some schools really like blow it out for this spring game. I mean, they, they pump it up to be the biggest event ever. They try to get 80,000, 90,000, hundred thousand, Michigan doesn't really do that. I mean, they they promote it a little bit, but the crowds are never huge. Michigan has somehow had terrible luck with the spring game weather for the last handful yeah. of years. Uh, one year they even canceled it, moved it indoors, and it's been cold. Looks like it's going to be pretty good on Saturday. A little chilly, but sunny. Should be a nice day for football. I guess I just wonder. We'll start here. It's not a real long answer. We don't need to go into a ton of depth about it, I don't think, but What's what is your guys' excitement level when the spring game rolls around? Is it are you pumped about it? I mean, it's it's football in April, but we've talked about it before. It's not like it's not starters versus starters, so you don't get to see the true O line. You don't get to see the ones versus the ones. Dad, I'll start with you. I don't I don't know. Have they first of all? I don't. They probably haven't been doing a spring game as far back as you can remember to when you were a kid. I don't think I don't remember when they started doing these, but what's your thought on, on the spring game? I mean, does it get you going at all in April here? Uh, this year's got some intrigue more so than the last few. Uh, our quarterback situation will definitely, definitely look like it's uh maybe we can learn something about it. Yeah. As far as how how many they've ever had, they probably have always had spring games. They just never, you know, you know the way uh, sports goes this year, as sports goes now, and the kids and everything on Instagram and YouTube <laughs> and everything else. So that's that's probably why some of the schools really blow, really have a big time blowout. Yeah, I mean, Ohio State just last week, they were claiming 80,000 at the horseshoe. It looked a little less than that to me, but whatever. I mean, that's the yeah. number they roll with. Michigan does the same thing on, on Saturdays in the fall, so we'll let it we'll let it slide a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, Nick, you, you – uh, same thing. I mean, are you going to – is this something you're like, oh, get the get the chips, get the food ready for Saturday, or is it, it just doesn't register that way for you? What do you think? Is that to me? Sorry. Yeah. Right now, the scout's answer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Saying, you told me to bring paper and pencil. I was right down. <laughs> Nick's taking notes um, already. <laughs> no, it's been a, it's been a week. Um, you know, it's one of those things where kind of like to Scott's point, maybe more intrigued this year. Last year, I can't say I watched it. Um, yeah. I, 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 I will tune in and maybe like see highlights. Cause like you said, it's not ones versus ones. So like last year if you wanted to see JJ like maybe you know he's out there for a series or something like that so you're not really seeing the guys that you want to see this year yeah. I would say with the quarterback situation it'd be nice to just see what they look like um if they do turn them loose at all and actually let them show some stuff or if they the next question is, is do does Sharon Moore play a little bit more reserved and just not really show anything and kind of keep his cards to the chest so it's yeah. that's kind of intriguing too is just to see what are they willing to show Saturday? That, 
That's exactly where I was going to go to Dan. Dan, do you think it's going to look much different than the last nine years under Harbaugh where he did, he did a draft, you know, so it was a competitive game, but it's, it's like dudes we're never going to see in the fall and everybody's trying to play and get reps. I mean, uh, it's now Sharon Moore's program. He doesn't have to do it that way anymore. But what do you, I mean, do you think it's just going to be kind of more of the same? I think it'll be just the same. I, we yeah. haven't seen a roster yet, right? Like that usually no. only out a day or so before. Yeah, they'll do it. I think, if again, if they're doing a draft and the way they've done it before, they usually will announce that. But yeah, nothing yet. I mean, we've, we've definitely seen it prior to the game, no doubt. But I haven't seen one yet. But no, I think he'll run it the same way. I don't I don't. You know, unless he just really feels like he's got to put a stamp on something and make it his. I mean, what's, what, yeah. what would be the reason to, you know, I don't. Yeah, that's I don't, a good point. That's a different. good point. And Eric, last but not least here, you'll be down on the field. I can't remember. I feel like the last couple spring games, they didn't have photographers down on the field. So that may be different from years past. I know, like, sure, I know COVID year and then the year after COVID, everything was still pretty like, don't, you know, don't get people around if you can help it. But I don't remember about last year. But anyway, you're going to be on the field. You've got some new gear. We talked about that. Just what are you hoping to see down there from that point of view? Yeah, so I'll probably have to do this again this year. But traditionally for the spring game, I've always been a watch the highlights after the fact guy. Mm. Because if something exciting happens or that you don't expect, you're going to see it over and over in the highlight clip anyways. Like a 15-minute YouTube video or something would suffice, certainly. But apart from what will happen in the game, I'm probably most excited to see a little bit of the pageantry. This year, as opposed to other years, they're celebrating a national championship. Mm. Um, I'm expecting some maybe a speaker a couple cool video montages. I want to see and revel in that glory. Yeah, they're getting to, you know, this is a big visit day. They bring in a lot of recruits. This is yep. not yep. every year you get to have a spring game after winning a title four months, yep. four months prior. So, yeah, that's interesting. I hadn't really thought about that. You wonder if it'll look any different. And they've got the big, you know, the new boards, which are mm-hmm. 30 yards wide or whatever the hell they are. They're massive. Get to put those to use a little bit. Yeah, so that'll be cool. I mean, like I said, I – I always find myself like pretty pumped to go. And then I get there and like 30 minutes in, I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good here. Like, cause it's just like, it's like You've dudes you're not really going to see. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen this before and it's not all that exciting. And like I said, it's not starters versus starters. So sometimes it can get a little sloppy. It's not real up and down. So we'll see what that ends up looking like. Um, and that'll be Saturday, uh, Saturday at noon. And I, I wonder how many people will show up for Michigan's. Like I said, the horseshoe, they did 80,000. I know Alabama, they do this big A-Day. It's like their big yeah. deal. They always get 70, 80,000 out there. Tennessee does so, it real big. For we'll the see. fans, I do there, know though. that Michigan is holding a couple events through the champion, uh, champion circle that mm-hmm. will involve autograph signings and a couple picture opportunities with the trophies that Michigan won last season. So I think town in general, Ann Arbor is going to be buzzing. And, of course, that will leak into the spring game. There you go. There you go. Some other cool stuff going on that, again, you don't get every year because you don't always have a national championship trophy to trot around a little bit. So, yeah, we'll see how that ends up looking. Maybe that's why it's so big at Alabama because they always do. They have had trophies <laughs> to trot around a little bit. Yeah, every six of the last nine years. Well, the hell they don't really have anything else in Alabama. <laughs> there is exactly. that. Exactly. There is that. Oh, what else man, does that I... do? Listen. <laughs> I have been, I actually pride myself quite a bit. My dad can tell you, I pride myself quite a bit on being objective covering the team. I mean, I'm a fan. I don't hide that, but I don't, I don't get wrapped up in the fanboy thing. Oh my God. When they beat Alabama in the Rose Bowl, I was like, I was like an eight year old. I was yelling at Bama fans. I'm talking (laughs) trash. I'm like, what you guys about to do back in Tuscaloosa? Nothing. Like you just, I was, I was having a blast because I mean, that was, that was an incredible, uh, incredible finish. And just the whole thing was, was like a, a movie. So anyway, all right. Unfortunately, we were talking about this just before we went live. And I kind of said like, this, this is the show we need to just start. Um, Denard Robinson, uh, busted for operating while intoxicated. I think that's the, the official charge. O W I. Was that a bicycle? Crash, was that a bicycle or a lawnmower? It, it was. <laughs> I I don't believe so. And it was it was listed as a one vehicle crash. So yeah. I don't yeah. know exactly what Not he like did or the, what the details were. Scooters. It wasn't yeah. just this oh, he actually ran into something. Or, a, yeah, this vehicle didn't end up in a retaining pond like from the Jacksonville incident seven years ago or so. Yeah, I had forgot about that. Eric actually brought that to my attention that Denard got popped for something like this when he was playing for the – or not playing anymore, was he? Was he on the staff for the Jags or was he a player? Not sure. But it was, it was in Jacksonville. Beginning to coach. 
Yeah, he was in Jacksonville and he was asleep at the wheel or something at an intersection. And then I don't know. It not good. Not good anyway around it. And unfortunately, Michigan just freaking dealt with this like a couple weeks ago with Greg Scruggs, the D line yep. coach. So I don't I mean, anybody, you, you, we're not going to spend a ton of time on this because it's kind of is what it is, and I don't even know every single detail of what happened. But so anybody, feel free to jump in. He's gone, right? I mean, like, got, gotta be. There's got. Gotta there, be. You literally just did this, so how can gotta how can be. it be any different for another guy? Yeah, the precedent has been set. I know, Nick. You said what did you say before it started? You said, "Is there going to be any?" Uh, does he get Does he get a pass because he's shoelace? You know, no, know you hate things. it. And well, and I'm not saying that he does, but I'm interested to just see like even what everybody watching at home thinks. Like, what, yeah. do you have a different opinion about it because it's shoelace and we got in when Michigan football wasn't that great, he was the one thing that was fun to watch on Saturdays. I know it. Yeah, that's so true. beloved. I don't, I don't, man. Nec- I don't necessarily I think- know that he should get a pass, especially yeah. given what just happened. It, it, the yeah. timing of that really bad. What would happen yeah. if it was in reverse? Yeah. Yeah. That's another question. What if Denard was first and then Scruggs was second? I mean, yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. I think it would change in that respect, yeah. But given Denard's history with a similar incident like this, I think that you need to kind of step in and do something. The precedent has been set, like we said, but this could be emblematic of like a larger issue with Denard as a person. Hopefully yeah, not, it's but it's it's not great. Yeah, I mean, he's just, I mean, dude, just from all accounts, an absolutely great dude, great individual. The players yeah. love being around him, but that yeah. – Man, a mistake's a mistake, dude. You can't you can't be doing stuff like this again. The timing couldn't be worse since they just had to fire a coach for it. I know, yeah, like, I, I always, ahead, you know, so Scruggs officially resigned. Like, yeah. you know, that's that's yeah. kind of the. And every time you see something like that, my first thought is, yeah, he didn't resign, but they do it that way so that if someone a little higher up the food chain makes the same mistake, they have a. A way to say these two aren't the same thing. Like he resigned, we'll do that. That's a good but point. Shoelace is not that guy. Like he, he's, I mean, he's just an analyst. I mean, like right. that's what I mean. Know, he's not that guy. Status so, like, wise, so as a, I think he's gone. Status wise, as a professional, he's lower than Scruggs. Name yeah. wise, as a Wolverine, right? He's he's a legend, and that's where it gets. It just sucks, well, man. He's I like I said. I, I meant it more like someone higher up the chain in terms of importance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no maybe, doubt. Maybe, maybe yeah. because certainly the fans like shoelace yeah. more than they even knew. He was struggling <laughs> yeah. here long enough for anybody to know him. I know, like, I know. Did you it's ever even see him in a press conference? Never did. Never even never, spoke. No, never did. It was. It would have probably been like literally that next week, and instead we were like yeah. talking to Sharon about what happened, and they released a statement, and that was that was pretty much it. So, yeah, it sucks, man. Like I said, he's he's just such a beloved player. Nick hit it on the head. I mean, he was like the lone bright spot so many weeks in a row when Michigan was not very good. And again, be, uh, play, players love him, fans love him. The the coaching staff had high hopes for him. I know his name even got kicked around like a tiny bit when they were looking for a running backs coach to maybe replace Mike Hart, obviously they went with Tony Alford, probably a good move, but you know, he was, he's not very old. He's climbing the coaching ladder. And and again, they're just a, a legendary Wolverine. You hate to see it. And I, I don't know how they can keep him. I just, yeah. this won't end yeah. his career, but I mean, like he's done you'd hope right. not. I mean, you'd hope not, but you know, you, yeah. <laughs> making those mistakes. Now somebody was talking to me like, dude, some companies like Amazon and some bigger companies like that, like, They'll give their employees like Uber cards just to like not do shit like this. It's like stop doing this, dude. Like get you know, get it all the money floating around Michigan, something like that could happen. Yeah, I mean, especially Scruggs. I mean, that's an on field position. He's making half a million bucks a year or more, dude. Like, get an Uber. You know, like mm-hmm. not that that not that your uh little fifteen dollars or whatever couldn't be afforded by Denard probably either, but man. You just yeah, that's, that's, that's the unfortunate part. There's so many other choices. Yeah, so many options. Mean. Cabs hey, in Ann Arbor, hey, Uber, Lyft. Get ready to. Who would not possibly. give Denard Mom, a home. ride in Ann Arbor? <laughs> what happened? Mom's home now. The mom's home. Get ready to mute me. Okay. All right. We'll uh, we'll be <laughs> on the lookout for that. Yeah, Eric. Great. Denard just walking down the street, like doing this. Anybody was giving him a ride home. Just don't mm-hmm. drive. I'm uh, drunk. I need a ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no kidding. No ran. kidding. Uh, uh, <laughs> just run home. <laughs> yeah. Your face is. <laughs> That's <laughs> so funny. All right, so that's a bummer. Nothing official has been said yet, but you, you kind of imagine just because of the precedent not long ago, probably no more Denard, and that's a that's a bummer. That is a bummer, yeah. and uh, you know we'll 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 see how that ends up playing out. All right, the first thing I wanted to do, 
We got. I have ten questions specifically about the spring game on Saturday, but I wanted to do something first. Somebody asked me who Michigan's best, or how, they worded it to me because Michigan had lost eighteen guys in the draft, and maybe twenty plus are we going to go pro various ways, um, you know, undrafted free agents and stuff like that. Somebody asked me who's left on this team, like who's even left on Michigan's team? How many good players do they have? Who is their best player? I think if you ask that question to a bunch of Michigan fans, you could get a couple different answers, but there's a few that would probably come up over and over and over again. So, but I want to, I want to ask it in a different way. This is, so this is why I told all you guys to bring a pad and paper, because this is what we're going to do. Nick's prepared. He's a teacher. I knew he'd be ready. He's taking notes already. Um, Dad might be using a quill and ink. I'm not sure if he has real. Okay. He's got a pen. So that's good. I think everybody should be good to go. Sponsored sponsored by the state bank. All right, here we go. (laughs) I'm going to give you guys five players that I think if you ask somebody who's the best player, it would probably be one of these five. But I'm going to give you guys all five, and I want you to rank them most important to least important on this year's team. Not where you think they're going to get drafted, not who's going to have the most stats, but most important to this year's team as Sharon Moore's trying to get this thing off the ground, as they're, you know, they, they've got a lot of question marks, especially on offense. Uh, taking into account, you know, some injury stuff and maybe guys be on, I think on Saturday, most people will be ready, but you'll never know. We'll find a little bit more out about that, but these are the five guys. So write down their names first, then that's where the Jeopardy music comes in. I'm excited to play this for you guys and the listeners out there and then rank them one through five. All right. You ready? ready. Donovan Edwards. Will Johnson. was the first two I already had written down. Yep. Keep going. <laughs> Mason Graham. Makari Page. And Colston Loveland. There's your five. If you could rank them, one being the most important for the 2024 season. And obviously, all five of these guys are extremely important. That's why I went with them. Thought about maybe throwing Orgy in there, but yeah, well, there's going to be plenty of discussion about the quarterback. So these are the five I came up with. Just a couple seconds. Rank them one through five. Go. fade it out there i think it plays for another minute but we probably don't need all that i actually uh i did this earlier and i think i just did it in a different order again like just (laughs) now so that kind of tells you a little bit about like as i was going through it i'm like this isn't this is a little tricky because i think you could make an argument for for each guy i'm not gonna go first let's go anybody want to volunteer to go first with their their one through five dad you've got the go blue sign i think you're the only one sporting michigan paraphernalia today why don't you give us your one through five what is happening with my other cronies? No mission. Yeah, nothing. I mean, Nick's representing New Lothrop. I, yeah, I got the, I got like the Jordan though. symbol anyway. Yeah. I've got my Michigan diploma behind my head. There you go. Okay. Oh, there, you go. Of the way. there it is. All right. All right, All right, Dad, what you got? One through five. Who do you have? Number I one. Now, just the way you. Just the, way you... Is it the oh. same order? Same order as you've set them. I, just, I said, well, that's a good order. I'm keeping it. Okay. So you had Donovan number one. one Number five. I was gonna do a backwards countdown so we could get to the oh, backwards, one. yeah. Colson Loveland, number five. Okay. Macari Page, number four. Yep. Mason Graham, number three. Okay. Will Johnson, number two. Okay. And the Don, number one. Okay, not too bad. All right, I out like of those, it. Out of those five. Out of those five. Nick, you've been taking notes diligently over there the whole time. What do you got? Yep. Five through one going backwards. Okay. Do you want me to give reasons to, or you just want the rankings? We'll we'll get into that a little bit, kind of as a, as a whole, once we hear the list a little bit. All right, I got Loveland five. Okay, I've got Donovan four. Oh, interesting, interesting. I got Will Johnson three. I got Mason Graham two. Okay, and I got Page one. That's that's why I gave the little little bit of a story before we started because of uh, Rod Moore. I mean, yeah, we'll we'll get into that a little bit more. All right, Dan, what you got? So those are two very different lists, I think so far 
So I had Colston five okay. and Page four, mm-hmm. uh, Will Johnson three, mm-hmm. Dono two, and Mason Graham one. Wow, dude, that's so different from, from so my different, team. like Very not even close. Vibrant. Yeah. All right, Eric, what do you got? I'll finish this up and then we'll talk about these a little bit. Yeah, I was checking. Everybody's list is different than mine so far. Still, <laughs> yeah, um, that's pretty crazy. Number five, I had Makari Page. Number okay. four, Dono. Number three is Colston Loveland. And then the two defenders top my list. Will Johnson at number two, befitting of his number on the field. And then Mason Graham's got the top spot for me. Wow. Wow. All right. I have I have Mason Graham at number five. Colston Loveland at number four. Makari Page at number three. Will Johnson at number two. And Donovan Edwards at number one. So it's I think, so Dad, you the, had Donovan at one. Hey, but the list is yes, fluid. And Nick, did you have Donovan at one? <laughs> no, no, I had no. Just, I had you, Paige. just you and I, son. He Me had Paige at one. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Here, here's okay. Who had who had? Uh, so somebody had Mason Graham at number one too. That was Eric. Yeah, I did. Me and yeah, Eric yeah. both did. Okay. So Donovan yeah. got two votes at one, and Mason Graham got two votes at one. Let's start right there. You're probably talking about maybe your best offensive player and probably your best defensive player. That's I why. I, so I had them one and two. Yeah. And okay. That was why. Like mm-hmm. kind kind of your offensive leader and your defensive leader. I think I looked yep. at it somewhat in terms of leadership too. So that's that's how I had yeah. them one and two. And I your just defensive line uh, takes so much pressure off your secondary. So Graham mm-hmm. at number one, he takes pressure off of Will. That's specifically why I had him at the top spot over Will. Yeah. So I had Graham at five. <laughs> which is obviously yeah, the opposite that's, of what you guys had. Can I, can I, I throw my two can, cents in as to why you had him at yeah. five? Yes. Because we know what he's going to do. I, I think that's part of it. I that's think why that's, I put Paige at one. To me, these other guys, I already know they're dudes. That's yeah. why Paige, to me, that's important coming into this next so you, season because we need somebody to fill that spot. And no Rod maybe, Moore. Maybe, and maybe I took the question a different way than yeah, you guys Yeah, you did. looked I at mean, it a little bit more like who's the most important that needs to right. – that Correct. needs to do something. Like the other guys, to like yeah, so he's he's kind of looked at it different. That's why I had Loveland at five because that dude's a stud. I, he doesn't have yeah. to show me any more than he already showed me. Which right. I think yeah, is no, fine. No. I mean, I have Loveland at four. I mean, I you know I think he, you know what you're going to get out of him. I'd like to see him be a little more productive. That's not entirely on him. Obviously, the quarterback's going to play. But so I have Mason Graham at five. Not be, I think he might be maybe arguably the best player on the team. But I also think their front four is really good. I think if yeah. he has a slightly off day, like Kenneth Grant's going to pick up the slack, they'll probably yeah, be fine. fine. Donovan Edwards has a bad day. That whole offense might not do anything. I mean, we don't know that. Yet. We don't know what the quarterback's going to look like. We don't know what the pass catchers exactly yeah. look like. I think Mason Graham has a little bit of an off day, or if he, you know, knock on wood, this doesn't happen, but he tweaks an ankle, he misses a few series. I don't know if the defense misses a whole much, whole, which is crazy to say. Yeah, but there's another guy right beside him that you could have put on this list too. Yeah. Exactly right. The only reason I, I think Kenneth Grant's per, completely mentionable here, but yeah. I didn't want to have two D tackles, so I just picked one right. of them. Yeah. No, um, sure. I just think Donovan Edwards needs to be an absolute stud this year. I think until we know what they're going to get at quarterback, like the running game is going to be so important, and I think he never should come off the field unless he like absolutely needs a blow. I love Khalil Mullings. I think Ben Cobb's got a good future. I like some of the, but like, I just think Dono needs to be out there all the time. Uh, whether it's split out in the backfield, in motion, whatever the case may be. So I I just see him as the most valuable offensive player, and I don't think it's that close. That's why I had him at one. It, it feels like he might be the most vocal leader left on the team, too. Like, he's, he's going to be vocal. Into that role. Yeah, he's like, stepping he, leadership into that role. Has, takes a lot of different forms, but he's going to be that vocal guy. Yeah, and then, there's some poise to him. So Nick had Makari at number one. I had him at three, kind of in the middle of the pack. He does need to step up now. With Rod Moore being out, where'd everybody have Will Johnson? Because I think, okay, I think if you asked a hundred people who Michigan's best player was, more than fifty would say Will Johnson. More than fifty, I yeah. would say Will Johnson, and I didn't. Yeah, have I would too. As a yeah. single, I mean, he's I, I would say Will Johnson for sure. He's going to be your your best overall player, probably. I had him at number two. Everybody else, where three, two, three. I two, had him. At, I I was going God, back and forth between two, two and three for him. Two, yeah. Okay, for me, it's about. It's kind of like what Nick said. I mean, you know what you're going to get with him. He's going to be a lockdown. He's going to, but I think that's because that's why, until you know who's the other corner opposite, he's pretty damn important because he's going to likely be with the other team's best receiver. Not every play, like they don't do that as much in college as they do in the NFL. 
But like he went with Marvin Harrison most of the day last year. Not not every single play, but a lot of the plays he was right across from him. So I think until you know who that other corner is, you hope that Will's on his game every single week so that he can step up and be the guy against the other team's biggest playmaker. So that's why I had him at two. Uh, who had Colston Loveland the highest? I had him at four. At about three. Anybody else? I had, who had him at five. Had him at five. five. And that's dad? Dad, where'd you have Loveland at? Five, because I, I know he's a, stud, yeah. he's a stud. So, so Eric, you had him where? Three? Uh, number three, yes. Talk about why you're, you're you're putting so much emphasis on on Loveland this year. And I, yeah. I think it could be vital, you know, depending on what the quarterback situation looks like. We don't sure. have any wide receivers. Um, <laughs> earlier today, I was thinking about Michigan's receiving room now that it's losing Christian Dixon to the transfer portal. Watch Tyler Morris is there. Watch this but I don't think you can tell the story of Michigan's 2024 season on offense from a, a passing perspective without mentioning Colson Loveland's name repeatedly. He, we saw he's very talented both in the red zone and in the open field. He's got good hands. He should be the number one option on passing plays for me probably every single game. He's our I, only, I only know. returning offensive starter, right, on the entire offense. Yeah, yeah you could – yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you really I, actually you're right. <clears throat> he is. I think I said I was I actually did a radio with uh, Jamie Morris today, Ann Arbor based. You guys know Jamie. Dad knows Jamie Morris. For sure, played at Michigan back with Harbaugh. Um, yeah. I said that Colson Loveland will pro- probably lead the team in receiving. So that's obviously oh, that obviously yeah. makes him pretty important. But yeah, it's kind of like what Nick said. You know what you're going to get from him. He's out. He's going to be on the field all the time. But in fact, he might play more snaps than anybody on offense because they never take the tight end off the field. And he's really the only one you've got at this point. I mean, Max Bredesen, I guess, is listed as a tight end, but he's more Marlon than Klein, um, Coach Casula waxed poetic about how athletic he looked. Um, I think it was yesterday, but we haven't seen much of him on the field yet. It's great that they're high on him, but we, you need to see it, yes. A little bit of Michigan trivia. You know who the backup punter is on their team? It's Marlon Klein, which is crazy. <laughs> He's a tight end, like four-star kid, big. I mean, but before the game, you can see him bombing punts with no shoes on. <laughs> it's just like, all right, Was I guess. It's, our questions? That's, it's not. And I, I just remember seeing it last year. I'm like, who the hell is number 17 all tatted up, just kicking Dude, bombs barefoot? It, and it was Marlon Klein. Yeah, it's probably because he comes from Germany. He's playing soccer. Yeah. Yep. There. So that's pretty funny. I thought I'm just like that's something you don't see every day. A tight end uh, warming up at, as a punt as a punter. So there you go. All right, How about that? that's interesting. We all did. I mean, none of them were even really close to being the same. Only two people had the same number one. Well, two groups of two people. Loveland down towards the bottom. When like you, you make an argument that he might be the best player on offense, I don't know. That's yeah, we cool. all we all lumped Will Will Johnson at two and three. Kind of in the middle, yeah. Yeah, and he would have been lower on the list for me had this question been asked before Rod Moore was injured. That's yeah, and that's why I thought it was big to put him on there. <clears throat> Excuse me, kind of talk about him being. I mean, he's he's also like really like quiet. He doesn't say a lot. He doesn't. He's not like a big rah rah guy. So he kind of just flies under the radar a little bit. He's gonna have to be a big big player for Michigan now with Rod being out and being yeah. like a leader back there, a veteran guy that's been on the team for a long time. And I think Will Johnson will step into that role a little bit too. He might more. be the best player on the team, but he's gonna play at the one position on the defense that's the biggest, the only question mark to, in my eyes. I mean, up front and and the linebackers are, I mean, they're stacked. They should be set. Yeah, yeah. no, no question. So, you know, he's All good, right. but then who else? You know. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. You you wonder who that other person's going to be. I think that's really important. All right. If you want to, if you're one, if you're like me, I like to number ahead. You can go ahead and number one through ten. We've got ten questions Spelling coming words. up here. All right. Um, shouldn't probably need a space in between. Oh. Um, we just lost my dad. There we go. He's oh, we are we losing multiple people? No. Okay, dad's coming back. You just switch right. side. Just switch lost sides. Everybody, lost everybody <laughs> but you, Ryan. Uh, no, only you. Lo- I was in here with the other three guys. This, this nice you screen. Were- Everybody went away, but you. I think you lost your internet connection for a second or something. You were, you were gone. You were getting ready to show something on your pad. You already numbered ahead. I already numbered. Yeah, I already numbered. Gold star, gold star for little Scotty. All right, here we go. <laughs> one through ten. <laughs> one through ten on these questions, specifically for the spring game on Saturday. 
And it's, it, I mean, I'm telling you, is there, has there been an, I forgot to turn this thing back off. You guys haven't said anything, so maybe it wasn't doing that that time. Um, it's really hard to do these. I, it's hard to do these for a regular game. It's going to be really hard to do this for a spring game because we really don't know what it's going to look like at all. In fact, we don't even know who's going to participate. Like, Donovan Edwards has like a stub toe. He might not play on Saturday. Yeah. So we'll, I was going to ask you, is, is uh, Jack Tuttle playing? Because I read something saying he's got some injuries. Yeah, there's a, there's a, I have a question about Tuttle, but I thought that I'm like, he might not even go on Saturday, yeah. but he, he's a seventh year, seventh year guy <laughs> he's tough, and he's probably got grandkids that are watching him. So he's going to want to play. Um, so we'll see what that looks like. But I, if that ends up being a, a no question, then, then so be it. That's number six on my list here coming up. So here we go. Number one. I should have done over under here, but I wanted to just leave it open ended so we could all just take our, our best guesses. Go ahead and write down how many times Donovan Edwards is going to carry the ball on Saturday. How many times will we see Dono take a handoff out of the backfield and carry it? Go ahead and write that number down. We'll come we'll we'll answer them all, then we'll come back through and discuss one at a time. That's how we're gonna do it. Number two. And this is one that a lot of people are going to be watching very, very closely. How many times does Alex Orgy put it in the air? How many times does Alex Orgy throw the ball on Saturday? Again, they've got six quarterbacks that might play throughout the, you know, from start to finish. I would assume that Orgy is going to be the first one to go, but you never know. We don't know exactly how Sharon's going to run this thing, if it's going to be a true scrimmage, but. How many throws do you think Alex Orgy has on Saturday? Are number all, three. Are these, son, are these all for number two? No. That was that was question. That was question two. Number one, how many carries for Donovan? Number two, how many throws for Orgy? Yep. But this is all number two. We're on number three now. Two through ten. This, this will be number three coming up next. I'm not sure what the question is. <laughs> <laughs> Might you, have to kick off. <laughs> You told Pick us that right out. now one through oh, ten. Oh man! Yes, I'm going one question at a time. We're now on number three. I've asked two <laughs> questions. I know it's been a long time since you've been in school, but I think one through ten has always been one through ten. I think your dad is saying, "Is this topic number two? Like when we yes. did, we ranked, we ranked those yeah, five we did guys. Rankings, we did ranking. That one was five. Que- that was question one in your dad's eyes. We're that on to a noise. brand new segment. Just forget oh, that God. last one. That last segment's over. So Plus, my number one is incorrect already then. All right. I don't know. <laughs> number one, how many carries for Donovan? Number two, how many throws for Orgy? It's pretty clear. Pretty straightforward. Oh, so I got a one. I got a one and a one A then. Okay. <laughs> See, if you had a pencil, oh, wow. you, you could make that a two. Honestly, this you is- can number it however you want. Just respond correctly to what Brandon. Right, asked. right. Yeah. There you go. See my number one. Right. What is the one through? What is one the through five? Drew there underneath the fifteen and oh. <laughs> your That's first right. question was your first question was rank uh, these guys one through five. No, that was that was like I said. I have one through. <laughs> oh. I knew this was a mistake. It took four shows. It took four shows to realize that this was a bad. This was a bad choice. <laughs> There's got there's got to be some comedic relief. All right, let's, what's the ma- what's yeah? Three? What, what, what's three? Three? what was the mantle? Why was there a mantle drawn? Are you doing are you remodeling the living room over there? No, f- fifteen and oh. That's my mantle. Yeah, but you have right. a three dimensional box under it. That's my mantra. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Eric. That's right. All right, three dimensional box. Uh, yeah, tell uh, us about this, please. <laughs> look. Does, does Scott have does Scott have tenure? Uh, year wise, <laughs> maybe, but ability, I, I, I don't. Well, that I don't know. I doubt it. All right, here we go. Question number three. This is the third question of ten. Right. Question number three. This it's is I need number a, four, but that's all right. All right, Dad. I I need a name. It's just a person's name for this one. Number three. Who will have more catches in the spring game? Colston Loveland, Samaj Morgan. Or Tyler Morris, which we all think is probably one, two, three when it comes to pass catchers, but that's a that's another that's another question. Which one of those guys, Loveland, Samaj Morgan, or Tyler Morris, who has more grabs on Saturday? All right, number four. We've seen this at different times in the past. I know a couple of years ago, Darius Clemens had a big catch, and everybody was like, "Oh, that's the that's the guy, man. He's going to be the new the new guy." <laughs> Never even really hardly played, and now he's 
not even at Michigan anymore. So th- this can always be tricky to figure out. You don't know what it's going to look like if the offense is even going to be on the same page. But what do you think, number four, the longest, not who, but what will the longest reception be? How many yards will the longest reception be in Saturday's game? Can be a run and a catch and run, can be just a bomb into the end zone, can be a long, you know, get tackled, whatever you think. But the longest completed pass on Saturday, how many yards? And well, I mean, obviously, I realize this is a tough one to get right. But we'll see who's we'll see who's the closest after Saturday. All right, number five. This is a simple yes or no. Simple yes or no. Will Kalel Mullings score a touchdown on Saturday? Will Kalel Mullings score a touchdown on Saturday? Kind of in. I think everybody envisions him being the short yardage back. Donovan has shown. Not the same nose for the end zone, I guess is a, a, a nice way to put it as like Blake Corum. I mean, obviously, Dono scored from a long ways out a lot of times, but sometimes you get down in there and he maybe he's a little too upright or the balance isn't quite. I don't know. I think Kalel's going to end up being the hammer this year. I think a lot of people see that, but we'll see what it looks like on Saturday. All right, number six. This is the one that might end up being uh, N.A., depending on, on the health of Jack Tuttle. Who plays more snaps on Saturday, Jack Tuttle or Alex Orgy? Is this a case of we want to see as much of Orgy as possible he's going to play, or you know, let's back him down a little bit, let's get Tuttle a bunch of snaps. He's a veteran. He's a guy who might play. What do you think that looks like? And, again, if Tuttle doesn't play, then that question's, uh, that question's obsolete. All right, number seven. Number seven. Do we see a field goal made of more than 40 yards? Well, keep in mind, I think we're all trying to figure out who the kicker might be this year. Uh, James Turner gone now. It, cause, is it Tommy Doman? Is it young it Adam be. Samaha? What do you think, Eric? Doman? Big, big Tommy Doman fan. He can do everything. In high school, he was a top punter and kicker on both of the rankings. So, yeah, we're kind of waiting to see. So this one's like, all right, do you think they're going to try one? And Not necessarily who it is. Because they, they could trot out several walk-on guys. So, you, I, I mean, I was looking at the kicker list today. I'm like, I haven't even seen three of those names before. So Marvin Klein. My, maybe Marvin <laughs> Klein steps back there and tries one. So I don't know what that will look like. But do you think we'll see a made field goal of 40-plus yards? Um, number eight. Number eight. Please write down two names. Two names that are most likely to get an interception on Saturday. Unfortunately, you do see some errant throws in spring games. Quarterbacks who don't get a lot of reps, the timing might not be there. Who are two? You, you might automatically just be like, oh, well, Will Johnson. Well, if I'm the other quarterback, I'm probably not throwing at number two a whole lot. So, take, you know, you got to think about that a little bit. So, give me two names of who could pick off a pass on Saturday. Two names who could pick off a pass. All right, number nine. Number nine. I want you to write down Loveland or the tight end field, and you're picking which will have more yards on Saturday. Is it Colston Loveland or every other tight end on the roster? We mentioned Marlon Klein, maybe looking to take a big step. Max Bredesen, we'll, we'll lump him in as a tight end. He's going to play a lot of snaps. He did last year. But Colston, Loveland, or the field for yardage total on Saturday. And finally, we started off with Donovan Edwards carrying the ball. Asked you to write down how many carries you thought he would get. So for number 10, how many catches does Donovan get? Because I think we all agree he's going to be very involved in the passing game this year as well. At least he, I think he should be. If he's not, they probably need to up that a little bit. But we've seen in the past that he can be a big, big weapon out of the backfield as a receiver. So I think I'm there. Going. You go. All right. Well, if you I'm have your good. answers in the wrong spots, you're automatically disqualified. So we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> all right. Let's go through these. What are we at? We're at 40 minutes. So this would be pretty good. We get through this. That might be the end of the night. And then we'll all uh, we'll all tune in on Saturday. It'll be, come, it'll be cool to look back at these on, on next Wednesday and see if we were anywhere remotely close with some of these. All right. We're just going to go right down the list each time. We'll go Eric, Dan, Dad, Scott. Eric, Dad, Scott. Dad, Nick. Scott is my dad's <laughs> name. Eric, Dan, Dad, Nick. And I'll finish out, and then we'll see what we came up with for these. All right. Number one, 
Eric, how many carries will Donovan Edwards have? Yeah, three. Three. Dan, how many carries for Dono? Six. Dad? Five. Mr. Hennigy? Two. Wow, I wow. said eight. So everybody pretty low on him. I said eight. I had the highest number, Nick. I think the lowest with two. Just short day for him, Nick. That's what you think? Can't get him hurt. Yeah. 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 You, you can't you can't risk him. Yeah, those guys are going to be low, too. Low too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just think with the, the O-line, I mean, you're not even going to see the starters. Oh, damn it. That's probably a better answer. I like Nick's answer. All right, number two. Uh, how many throws will Alex Orgy have? Eric? Four. Four. Dan, tosses Ten. for Orgy. Ten? Dad? Fifteen. Fifteen. Mr. Hennigy, round us out. I had him at five. Five. I also had ten. So Dan and I both said ten. Dad thinks fifteen. That's a pretty big number, but I, I think you got to see it, right? You yeah, that's what you got to see. Not no running, you don't have to see. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. All right, number three. Which one of these guys will have more catches? And I gave us pretty much the only three guys we've seen catch passes for Michigan coming into 2024. Is it Colston Loveland? Is it Samaj Morgan? Or is it Tyler Morris? Eric, you went with? I went with Samaj Morgan, though I wanted to write down a name that wasn't part of that group of three. Let's hear the name. Let's hear the write-in. I can't remember who it was. I know I wanted to, but it'll come back. <laughs> I can't remember who it is now. <laughs> it'll come back. Right, well, part of the rules to go outside of the group of three. Fair enough. If you think about it, we'll come back to that one. Dan, who you got? Loveland, Samaj, or Tyler Morris? I took Morris, but, I mean, it was close. But, but you know, it's not going to be Loveland. I mean, I don't know. You just, again, you don't need to see it. So yeah. The other two receivers, let's, let's throw them the ball. But, okay. Yeah, Eric, you thought of who it was? Close. Yeah, Marlon Klein. Oh, yeah. We're, we're, he's on the Marlon Klein train tonight, I guess. We'll see. <laughs> Write him down in parentheses. We'll come back to that one, too. All right, Dad, who you got? Samaj. Samaj Morgan, Mr. Hennigy? I got Morris. Morris, and I had Samaj Morgan as well. I just think oh, they'll throw him bubbles. They'll do the little short stuff. That'll maybe not the most yards, but I think he'll have the most catches. All right, number four, the longest reception. Again, I think it was 50-plus, if I'm not mistaken, to Darius Clemens in the back of the end zone a couple of years ago. Big catch, big play. Um, and you always see a few. There's a, I think like Peyton O'Leary had like a 45 yard touchdown or something a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken, too. So, how long is the longest reception on Saturday, Eric? What you got? Yeah, 32. 32 yards. All right, Dan, what you got? 36. 36. Mr. Brown? 70. <laughs> 70 a bomb coming out wow. throwing and that's that's donovan edwards right that's what i was thinking <laughs> out of the backfield yeah, all right nick thinking. nick what do you have 27 27 and i just had a random 40, number i had 42 <laughs> also random number i just think yeah, a little over 40 little 40 yarder all right so dad thinks going big going big or going home on saturday all right i like that i like that all right i think we're going to be unanimous on this one this might be the only one Kalel Mullings to score a touchdown on Saturday. Eric. Oh, yeah. Dan. Yeah. Dad. Yes. Nick. No. Nick uh, with the – he's going to he's gonna knock the horn off. I also no. said yes. Nick, why not? All four of us say yes. They're just going to pound it in with Orgy at the one. That's – hey. Give, that's, it, give it to the new QB. Let it give, Build his confidence up. Let him run it in. We've seen Mullings do it a bunch of times. I don't hate the thought. I don't hate the thought. That yeah. changes a lot of what you and, can do and, down there and, with a guy like that. And Mullings, he, he might only be in there one series too. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Okay, they, I like they that. They might not be on the same team, Nick. That's a good point. There's, there's that too. That's it. Hey, that's good. Too, we had the rosters that can change some of these answers, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, some, that's some nice variables right there, though. I like yeah. the thought process. You got to think like – on a Saturday too, like what that would look like on a, during the yeah. season, like during the like season, or, yeah. orgy from the one the starter and Ooh. it's him. Like yeah, that, that's gonna be that's easy. Defensive no handoff. Know what you're gonna do? Yeah, dude. What the, I I wrote an article and even drew out a diagram. Had all the bodies in there. Who I would put where for the tush push using Alex Orgy like two years ago. I'm like he's yeah. bigger than Jalen Hurts. Just let him do the same yeah. thing, man. They'd be unstoppable. So that Kenneth, that could be something Kenneth behind him. Oh man, I don't think KG was even on the team when I came up with the thought, but that yeah, that would be that would be all day. All right, number seven. Again, we don't know who the kicker might be. Got a couple walk-on guys in there. Adam Samaha, the Ann Arbor kid, Tommy Doman. How about number six? Uh oh, that's the one I but did I skip that one? Did I go out of yeah. order? 
Yeah. But we know that was uh, yeah, you, you might have to get rid of if Tuttle doesn't play. Yeah, yeah. it's the we, Tuttle or Orgy for more snaps. Did I yeah. just say that and I never did that question? Okay. All right. I think I started it. Maybe we didn't do it. All right. So more snaps played on Saturday. Again, if Tuttle doesn't play, then so be it. But Eric, who do you got? Orgy. If all things are equal, I guess. We'll just take it that way for now. Dan, who do you got? Orgy, because again, they've seen Tuttle play. I mean, okay. whether it was here or wherever, you know, they've seen him plenty and Orgy not so much. All right, Dad? Orgy. Okay, Nick? Yeah, I had Orgy too. I actually had Tuttle. So what about I was the only one that said Jack Tuttle. I just kind of again I I personally think that unless they find somebody in the portal, they already know it's Orgy. They already know he's their guy. Every player at the press conferences has mentioned his name first, like yeah. not even a thought. And I'm like, he's the guy. So they're like, I don't think they want to get him dinged. It's I think the he's free, gonna... it's just the freakish athleticism. Like, because <laughs> if you don't have a pass game, you at least got I know the other piece. He, but even if you think it's the same, you know, even if you think that they know he's the guy, it's not the same as they knew JJ was the guy last year. It, no, absolutely I mean, not. A, it's not. He's even way close bigger and less same. likely to be dinged. But B, he has never played. I mean, yeah. what's he got? Ten snaps on his career. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. just needs some experience. So I'm still yeah. playing him. I'm not okay. too concerned I'm... about Orgy getting hurt either. He's, he's not, not going to get hurt. Wrong kid. <laughs> I know. He's a beast, dude. <laughs> he is a beast, man. That dude is put together, man. Go deliver Absolutely. The yeah. Yeah. He's the hammer, not the nail. I would agree with that. All right. Number seven. Almost skipped it or tried to skip number six to get to number seven. Again, Adam Smaha, maybe Tommy Doman, maybe one of these walk-ons. Do we see a field goal of more than 40 yards on Saturday? Eric? Negative ghost rider. No field goal of 40 plus. Dan? I got the no as well. All right, Dad? Yes, 48 yards. All right, Mr. Hennigy? I had a no. I have a yes. I think because kind of what we've been saying this about a lot of guys, because you don't know and you're going to have a new guy and you want to figure it out, let's let's put him out there in the big house with a, a quote-unquote real defense coming at him a little bit. So I said right. yes, but – right. Certainly wouldn't be surprised. I don't even know how much they'll kick it. I mean, in this, you know, you're trying, you're trying different situations. Oh, it's fourth and four. Normally in a game, we'd kick it here, but let's go for it and see what our, you know, I don't know. We'll see. But I said yes. All right. Number eight, name two people who you think will get an interception on Saturday. Again, lots of quarterbacks, lots of different receivers doing different things. Eric, who do you got? Two guys. Zeke Berry, uh, Jaden McBurrows. Oh, I like the Zeke Berry pick quite a bit. I didn't put him, but I thought about that one quite a bit. All right, Dan, who do you got? I had Quentin Johnson and Macari Page. All right, sounds Will good. Johnson Dad, what? Like two snaps. On the yeah, day. I don't think he's going to play very much. I don't <laughs> yeah. think so either. Dad, who'd you say? I reverted back to the original first question and went with Will Johnson <laughs> and Macari Page. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, the, look, those are your two best secondary guys. How much yeah. they're going to be in there is what, what that will come right. down to. But right. All right, Nick, what you got? I wrote down two guys on the depth chart that I haven't heard of. All right. Can we hear their names? No, that's literally what I wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I'm not I mad at it. For, it'll be yeah. two dudes that I've – who the hell's that guy? I'm not mad at it. All right. I said <laughs> – Again, maybe he's not in there long enough, but I did say Makari Page kind of playing some center field back there. And then Brandon Hillman is my little X factor. Second year player that got some decent snaps last year. Brandon Hillman, another safety who's maybe going to have to step up in Rod Moore's absence. All right, number nine. Uh, this one was who will have the most yards receiving? Is it Colston Loveland or the tight end room? So either Loveland or the field. Eric, you said who? The field. The field. All right, Dan, who you got? I also took the field. All right, Dad? The field. And Nick? Same. I took Loveland. Apparently, I'm an uh, idiot. I think he gets maybe two catches for a decent amount of yards, and then there's too many other guys rotating in and out all over the place, but we'll see. We'll see what that looks like. Yes, there are six dudes who could play it. I'm trying to. Get, I'm just trying to go off the top of my head. I know that the, the one Beatham kid transferred. And beyond that, they don't have a lot of scholarship dudes. I think it's Marlon Klein and, and Loveland might be about it that's actually played before. They've got Zach Marshall, young guy. I'm trying to think of who else they even have. Should have pulled that up. So you yeah. mentioned all the tight ends. I have a question about that, about your question, actually. When you say okay. the field, are you referring to the field as all of those players that are not Colston Loveland, how many Correct. yards they get combined? Or Correct. individually, will one player score more? Nope, the whole entire group. Okay. 
or Loveland, yes. Yeah. So five so, versus okay. one. Five so you've catchers got, versus one. You've got Marlon Klein, a junior, 6'6", 250. Brady Prescorn, who I think that kid's got. He's a true freshman. That kid's going to be a stud. 6'6", 245, does not look like a freshman. Jalen Hoffman, I think he's a walk-on. Deacon Tonielli, he's been there a couple years, hasn't played yet. Again, Bredesen, listed as a tight end, does more of the H-back, fullback stuff. Noah Howes, that's a walk-on. Brandon Mann, that's a former quarterback who has been transferred over to a tight end. Hogan Hansen, that's another true freshman. He looks really good. And then Zach Marshall. So that's a whole bunch of dudes going up against just one. Yeah, I probably picked wrong on that, but I'll stick with Loveland. <laughs> and then uh, last but not least, wrapping it back up with Donovan Edwards. How many catches do you think Donovan Edwards will have on Saturday? Eric, how many do you think? Two catches. Two catches for Dono. Dan? Man, Eric, I also had two. We've had okay. a lot of the same, Eric, on this. Uh, on this. <laughs> Dad, what you got? Five. Five grabs <laughs> for Dono. Nick? I also had two. I also had two. So that's okay. all right. So a couple little out. tosses to him again. <laughs> I don't know how much he'll play. You know, you want to see it, but you don't want to get him hurt. Dan, you know, said, I like how you put that earlier. You said, like, you, you, you know what Dono looks like running the ball. I want to see you, Orgy throw that you thing. You don't need a to see bit. it. Yeah. All right. So there you go. So there's our answers, 1 through 10, spring game specific. We will all get a chance to check it out on Saturday. I hope it's fun to watch. In the past, it's been a little bit dull at times. Um, some of the games have been somewhat competitive, and the players are certainly into it. Under under Harbaugh, if you guys remember, the winning team got steaks, and the losing team got hot dogs. I don't know if they're That's still awesome. doing that. Yeah, Glizzy. I think I forget who it was. Somebody else was somebody on the team actually said they'd rather have hot dogs. And I was like, that's just that's sacrilegious. But that's just wrong. Anyway, that's just wrong. I'm gonna wrap it there. I'm gonna wrap it there. I had a couple other things kind of about the spring game, but I think kind of doing it that way, ranking some guys, going through, coming up with some numbers, having a little fun with it. I think that's a good place to stop it, let you guys get back to your lives. Um, and we'll uh yeah, we'll see what NCAA stuff, huh? We'll see what now. <laughs> I don't even think it's that big of a deal. It does. Like, yeah. That's, I mean, that's the story. Like, I don't feel like it is either. So this, obviously the sanctions came down for Michigan's recruiting violations, nothing to do with the sign stealing stuff yet. We'll see what that even ends up looking like, if anything. And, but yeah, just some, some very basic recruiting, um, recruiting restrictions. And that's yeah. really about it. Can you nothing, even find what the recruiting restrictions are. I, they weren't specific. I, I didn't say right. I don't think it was a loss of scholarships because they usually say that. They would say that, yeah. It, it might be different. instead of certain coaches being on the road, instead of having eight, you can only have five or so. I don't know. It's probably something also, minor. The the probation is in reference to NCAA sanctioned events, and the Big Ten Championship nor the Natty are NCAA events. So I don't think that it impacts <laughs> that. That's I don't yeah. Know what the so. It just didn't seem like much of a punishment, and that's I, I think that's fine because the, the infractions were not a big deal either. Right, so. but does that set the stage for maybe a more harsh Connor Stallions punishment? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what that ends up looking like when that comes down. And I mean, not the, again, not the best thing for Sharon Moore to have to deal with in year one, but hey, it is what it is. Fellas, I like that one. I like the, I like the, little, the little guessing game, and we'll see how we did. And um. Yeah, we'll try to make sure that Dad understands 1 through 10 next time if we do anything like this before. Any other drawings you want to show us, Dad, before we get out of here? <laughs> why, didn't, uh, why didn't you just say 1 through 11? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's hey, not so, really what it was, was it? Show, hey, Sean, show everybody my new truck. How do I do that? Oh, yeah, you sent a picture of it in a text. You got a picture of it, I think. Scott Brown's new truck, a little beefier, a little bigger for the uh, to pull the camper. Pulling the camper, yeah. Look at him, just like a six-year-old with a new Tonka. Couldn't be happier. Dino I know Nick, Dan, Nick and Dan aren't going to appreciate the Ford, but that's okay. That's hey, that's all right. Still got that Ford. Hey, if you need a tow, Scott, you call me. <laughs> all right, we'll do. We'll do. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, we'll be back on Wednesday. Everybody enjoy the spring game on Saturday. We'll see.